So if you ever needed a video discussing how the watch or the timepiece changed the world, this one is probably it. The format of this is going to be different. Treat it more like a verbal essay, not so much a scripted write-up on any particular topic. This one's going to discuss a bit of history and the real evolution behind an incredible story. If you have a background that stems from the nautical side of things or aviation, the story might not interest you just as much as it did me. Me being someone who never really excelled at geography at school, I know into the basics, but not really the deeper story behind it. And it's a story that really encapsulates why watches and timekeeping is so important and what it means beyond the hobby. And when I think about it more, the real argument to this discussion focuses on GMT and world time complications and just how important they are. Could they be the most important complications ever made? A couple of weeks ago, I discovered a book simply titled Longitude by Deva Sobel. So the aim of this exercise is to share what I learned in the book and bring the idea home with a bit more of a modern approach. Let's transport ourselves back to the 1700s, put ourselves in that position. At a time when the navy was really important, the idea of shipping and traveling was in its infancy, but trading was booming. The only way to really navigate yourself at the time was to use landmarks. You needed to kind of know where you were situated. You needed to see continents to keep yourself at least aligned with where you were going. The only real device at your disposal was a compass and a sextant. So you could determine your latitude, looking at the sun, lining up its angle with the horizon. You're able to determine where you are on a horizontal level. Now that's great if you're traveling from left to right, but as we know in the sea, the currents push you all over the place. So really, you are lost. And this made traveling so dangerous, crossing the sea impossible. Thousands upon thousands died at sea because they simply got lost. The real enigma was understanding longitude. No one could determine longitude. The only real approach they had was determining speed through knots and trying to plot out your route there. But a small miscalculation could lead you 100, 200 kilometers from your destination. And it so happened that during the 1700s, a set of five Navy vessels were sent out to sea, never to be found again. Over 2,000 men were killed, and that really caused an outcry, it was a national outcry in Great Britain. And so many people rallied around this idea, and soon a new law was passed. We could almost call it a competition, trying to understand and explain the longitude problem. And the longitude prize was a £20,000 award given to anyone who could solve it. Scientists, astrologists, they were baffled. There was no way to work around it. But wouldn't you know, a watchmaker by the name of John Harrison thought he had it solved. Simply using a reference time, having a chronometer that is the most accurate of all, would allow the user to determine their longitude at sea or anywhere else. How this was done is simple enough. The world rotates 360 degrees a day. Divide that by 24 hours and you get 15 degrees per hour. So understanding that you left point A when it was midday and you arrive at point B three hours later, you can understand that 45 degrees has elapsed between A and B. So with the simple use of a reference time, knowing where you departed and where you are now, you can determine whether it's 15, 30, 45 degrees that the world has rotated, thus being able to determine your longitude. So theoretically, John Harrison had solved this enigma. And the real issue was to create a watch or a clock to keep time to the second as accurate as possible. Very difficult in those days. Would you believe that his clocks were actually made of wood? And so as time passed, he started experimenting with new approaches. Many of you know who George Daniels is. He's acclaimed as being one of the greatest watchmakers of all time. John Harrison was one who really established this area. What's most amazing is when you see his inventions, Getting rid of the idea of pendulums and incorporating systems like balance springs that we now know so much of today. His method of using an escapement that didn't require any lubrication. And from this exercise, he created what we now know as the marine chronometer. And all it was essentially was a watch that kept perfect time. That's all it needed to do. It had to be more accurate than anything else. Back then, a really accurate watch or timepiece was within one minute a day, plus or minus. So over time, this technology he created miniaturized. And wouldn't you believe one of the first watches or pocket watches that was supplied for an expedition was given to James Cook, the man who would eventually discover Australia. And they had a funny nickname for the watch, calling it something like our reliable friend. 
So after this invention, we think about what has come from this simple exercise of creating an accurate timepiece that could determine your location while you were at sea. I believe that if it wasn't for this watch, we wouldn't have aeroplanes as we know today. We wouldn't understand time zones as well as we do. There wouldn't be rockets going into space. There wouldn't be satellites. And what's most fascinating of all is that GPS, the way we use GPS nowadays, uses the exact same principles, determining three separate time zones from different locations to pinpoint your exact position where you are sitting. So this watch really did change the world. No longer were people traveling with fear in their hearts that they would be lost, that they would never find their way home again. And that opened a whole new realm of possibilities. So we look at it in the modern sense. What is the best complication that really epitomizes this? I've thought of three brands that are important. Breguet and their Marine, Patek Philippe and the World Time, and Ulysses Nardon, with one of their most incredible complications called the Tellurium. There are many more, but the simplest exercise is referring to a watch like the Rolex GMT. Very basic, quite rudimentary, and the approach of being able to determine three separate time zones at a glance. It's so powerful when you consider what the marine chronometer did and what the GMT complication represents. If we then move a step further and we look at Patek with their world times, some of the most incredible complications ever made, and it really does ring true with a subject like this. The idea of not only being able to determine a time zone, but knowing what the time is on every corner of the globe. How this technology has evolved up until this point in time. And then as a further callback to that history, having the globe hand-painted onto the dial in enamel just really rings home that point. And then what started it all, the Breguet Marine Chronometer. Breguet, at that time and further on, was known as a brand that created some of the best marine chronometers of all time. And even to this day, Breguet stays true to that and reminds us of this heritage with their marine pieces and their marine line. Finally, Ulysses Nardin, as a brand, takes a lot of its inspiration from nautical themes. And the Tellurium is one such watch that we have featured before. We have discussed it on a live show. This piece is so captivating because it doesn't just tell you the time or the phase of the moon, but also tells you exactly where in the world the sun is hitting. So for the purpose of marine navigation, you have this extra instrument. So lining up when determining latitude, looking at Polaris, the North Star, or the sun, this is just another added detail, an extra element that makes timepieces like these beyond fascinating. So in the end, the watch really did find its footing at sea, simply being used as an instrument to help determine where you are on the planet. And it's a story that I had no idea about. So the next time you look at a watch that has any kind of marine history behind it, or a watch that says mariner or sea, has a diving bezel, has a GMT complication, a world time, Remember where it really was established and how important it actually is. So the next time someone asks you a question as to why you wear a watch, you can say something like, this is one of the greatest technological advancements in the history of mankind. And if it wasn't for this basic, simple instrument, we wouldn't know where we are.